As you can see, today we're going to be talking about the math project quarter two, The Gift, or The Gift Needs a Wrapping. Mr. Rowe and I today are going to show you how to do this project. So I gathered some things you might need. You're going to need something to measure with. You don't need a measuring stick. You could use a tape measure. You could use a ruler. Something to measure with. A good marker, a pencil, a pen, and if you need it, you might need some scrap paper if you're going to do your summary on paper instead of the box, okay? So, the idea behind this is you have a pretend gift and you are going to be taking that pretend gift and figuring a box that will hold it. Remember we talked about holding stuff, that's volume. So you're gonna get a rectangular prism, a box, now, it doesn't have to be this box. It can be bigger or smaller. That's up to you, but you need to find a box. You're then going to measure the box. That's where your ruler comes in. You're going to measure three dimensions on the box. So I'm going to start by measuring here. And this is six inches. So I'm actually going to write on the box six inches. And I'm going to draw a line to show where I just measured. That way when Mr. Good and Mr. Roa grade your project, we know that that dimension is six inches. Then I'm going to measure another dimension. And remember, when you're measuring these dimensions, I suggest you use a vertex or corner because if you use the vertex or corner, it's much easier to measure. And this is 18 inches. Now I'm rounding up a little bit. My box got crushed a little bit. I just saw something which I'm, I'm gonna see if any of you notice it when we talk about it. So this line right here, that dimension is 18 inches. Now interestingly enough, you see right here, they have the dimensions on the box for me. But notice when I measured this, the side over here, I got six inches and it's because it's not a brand new box. It's been crushed a little bit or expanded. So you use your measurements. I don't care what it says on the box. I want you to still measure them, okay? Even if the dimensions are labeled like it is here. Lastly, we have to measure, we have the corner again, the vertex. We have to measure this dimension. So we're gonna measure. I put it there and I came up with 13 inches. So I'm gonna put 13 in here. And then I'm going to draw my dimension in. Okay, so my box is now got my three dimensions. I'm now gonna take those dimensions and I'm gonna figure the box's volume. Now I highly suggest that you make some organization decisions here. You can put the work on the box if your box is big enough. And this box is definitely big enough for me to write neatly and organized. If you pick a tiny little box, you're probably gonna wanna do your writing on a summary sheet, which is a separate sheet of paper, which is why you might need a piece of scratch paper. I don't need that scratch paper because I've got a nice big box here. I suggest you start by writing with pencil first. Don't write with pen because I don't want to see anything scratched out. Write nice and neat with pencil. So we're going to start by writing our, for, our formula, our volume formula. And we know the formula is volume of whatever we're looking for. And this, of course, is a prism. Equals length times width times height. My next step is to substitute. So volume of a prism equals, now I'm going to assign one of my dimensions for length, and I'm going to use the 18 inches for length, times one of my dimensions, I guess I'll use the 6, the 6 for width, and my last one I need to use is 13. Yeah. 13, Mr. Roa told me, and he's absolutely correct. 13 inches. I then get out my calculator, and I want you to use the calculator. I don't want to see multiplication problems written on this. 
we use calculators, we use our tools in math. So I'm using my calculator. I'm gonna check my work, I'm gonna do 18 times six times 13. It gave me 1404, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna double check because I, I have fat fingers and I may have hit a, hit a wrong button. So I'm gonna try it again. 18 times six times 13. And I got that again. So my answer there is 1,404. And that is my volume. <laughs> I didn't spell prism right. Duh, yes. Mr. Good. Got to put an S in there. Mr. Roa probably knew that and was being polite and not yelling at me <laughs> while we were filming. I know. <laughs> but anyway. And there we go. Okay. So there's my volume, nice and neat. Mm -hmm. The next step is to do the surface area because we're wrapping this. And if I want to figure out how much wrapping paper it's going to take to cover all the faces of this prism, I've got to do the surface area. So I'm going to find a nice neat spot to do that. And I think I can do it right under my volume. Where's my volume? Oh, there it is. So again, I'm going to draw myself a little line. I'm going to use the chart method. You can use the chart method or you can use the formula method. Mr. Good does not care which method you use for surface area. Now you may need to use a ruler while you're doing your chart to make the lines nice and neat. Mr. Good's got a pretty, pretty good hand for making straight lines, but I do want the lines to be pretty straight. Remember when we're doing this, you need seven. One for each face and one more for the surface area. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna put one more. I'm gonna actually do eight just so I can put some titles in. Three columns. And this will be the uh, face. This will be the work. And this will be the area. Hold on. Like this. Is it still? Yep, it's a recording. We're good. All right, so I'm going to start. I have the front. In class, I know we normally use abbreviations, but since this is a project, we want to write them out. So I have front, back, top, bottom, left, right, and you can still use the abbreviation for surface area. All right, so for the work area, for the front. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna pick two of these and I'm gonna do 18 times six. And since the front and back are both the same, I'm gonna do it twice. Get out my calculator, clear it out, and 18 times six. Do that again real quick, 18 times six. 108 inches squared. They're square inches because this is an area. Now I need to pick two more. I've already did the 18 and the six, so let's do the six and the 13. Again, I do it twice because the top of this box is exactly the same as the bottom. And that would be, I think I know it, but I'm gonna use this just to be a good example. So six times 13 equals 78. Let's run it again, six times 13 equals 78. And again, inches squared. And now I need to figure out which one I haven't used, which two numbers I haven't multiplied. I did the 18 and the six, and the six and the 13, which leaves me the 18 and the 13. So I do 18 times 13, 18 times 13. And I do 18 times 13. Do it again, 18 times 13, 234 inches squared, 234 inches squared. And again, the left is the same as the right. The last thing I have to do here is add this column. I've got to add this column. And when I add that up, I'm going to do 108 plus 1. Oh, made a mistake, so I'm going to clear it out and start over. 108 plus 108 
plus 7, 8, plus 7, 8, plus 2, 3, 4, plus 2, 3, 4 equals 840. I'm going to do it again just to check to make sure I didn't make a mistake. 108 plus 108 plus 78 plus 78 plus 234 plus 234. And again, I got 840 inches square. Inches square. All right. Now, you'll notice on our directions, there's one more thing you have to do, and that's figure out how much the wrapping paper would cost. According to the directions, which we'll read in class, it says, lastly, you will need to calculate how much money it would cost you to, to, gift, to wrap your gift if wrapping paper costs two cents a square inch. So I'm gonna do a quick calculation. Again, I'm making it nice and neat, so I'm gonna label this the cost to wrap. And it's two cents a square inch, so it would be two cents, or 0 .02, or two hundredths, times the amount of wrapping, the uh, amount of square inches I'm going to cover, which is 840 inches squared. Once again, I go to my calculator, 0 .02 times 840, and it would cost me $16.80. Now, you notice my calculator says... 16.8, but since it's money, I have to add a zero in the pennies place. Put the dollar sign in front and circle it, and there you have it. Nice and neat. Now, again, if your box is too small, you can fill this all out on a piece of paper.